Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we shall take a look at uh, how to do PCA on a standardized data set. Uh, so we have variables x1 through xp. And so zi or z1 is a standardized version of x1, where z1 is x1 minus mu1 divided by sigma1. So basically, to standardize a variable, we subtract its mean and then divide by the standard deviation. So now I'm just collecting all of the variables in uh, vectors. So all of the z variables are in vector z, x variables in vector x, and so on. And of course, mu has all of the means. Uh, a more concise way to represent z is this. So z is v times x minus mu. V is a matrix. Uh, it's basically a p by p matrix. It's a diagonal matrix where all of the diagonal elements are one by sigma, uh, one by the standard deviations. Um, so it's v times, so x, remember, x is a vector. Its dimension is p by 1. And mu is the mean, its dimension is p by 1 again. So this, uh, all of the dimensions match up. This is just a concise way of rephrasing this statement, okay? So z are all the standard uh, variables. So the covariance of z uh, is now v times sigma times v. Sigma is the covariance matrix of x. And v times sigma times v is basically, uh, I'm go we're going to denote it as rho. And this rho is basically the correlation matrix of x. So if you go back and think about uh, how to uh, write, uh, how uh, think of the relation between the covariance and the correlation matrix, you will realize that if you have the covariance matrix, v is this diagonal with the standard uh, or the inverse of standard deviations then v sigma v is just the correlation. So sigma is the covariance of x and rho is the correlation of x. It turns out that the covariance of z is the just the correlation of x, okay? So uh, the principal components of z are obtained by the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the correlation matrix of x, right? Because the covariance of z ends up being the correlation matrix of x. So now uh, we move on to an example. So we have matrix x with two elements, x1 and x2. This is the covariance matrix. This is the correlation matrix. So the question is, find the principal components of x and of z. So z is the standardized version of x. So we'll start with x, okay? Uh, so of course, to, for uh, principal components or to, com uh, or to implement PCA, we need to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of sigma. Uh, a quick way to do this is using R. So you can go to R and you can use that to find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of sigma. Turns out that the first eigenvalue is 100.16. This is the first eigenvector. Second eigenvalue, and this is the second eigenvector. So now, uh, if you remember, recall the formula for PCA. So Y1 is the first principal component. We look at the first eigenvector. So 0 0.04 times X1 plus this number times uh, X2. Uh, y2, we look at the second eigenvector, right? So the coefficients of the linear combination come from the second eigenvector. So we get this expression or this equation for y2. So if you take a look at y1, right? y1 is 0 0.04 times x1 plus 0.999 times x2. So the coefficient for this x2 is very large compared to that of x1. So we can say that the second uh, variable x2 dominates the uh, first principal component. Uh, and moreover, uh, if you look at the proportion of variance of the first principal component, right, which is 100.16 divided by 100.16 plus 0.84, it turns out that the first PC uh, um, explains 92, sorry, 99.2 percent of the total variance. And this is mainly because the variance of X2 is really large, right? So X2 dominates this first principal component uh, because it's uh, it has a really large variance. 
and the first principal component explains most of the variance okay so keep that in mind and now we will proceed to calculate the uh, principal components of z so remember for z we need to look at eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the correlation matrix which is this and if you uh, i just calculated this using r so once we have the eigenvalues and eigenvectors we can write the principal components so y1 <coughs> excuse me is the first principal components 0 0.707 times z1 right because our variables are now z1 and z2 so we are looking at their linear combination plus 0 0.707 times z2 the second principal component y2 is this guy times z1 uh, minus or plus this negative value times z2 so we get this so remember z1 is a standardized version uh, of x1 so i can write this right so z1 is just x1 minus mu1 by sigma1 so I can write these principal components in terms of variable x. And now if I look at this proportion of variance explained by the first principal component, it turns out that it is 70%. Again, remember, uh, first, uh, so this so 1.4 divided by 1.4 plus 0.6, right? So this is the total variation. And 1.4 is the variance of the first principal component. Uh, and also, if you look at this, the contribution of both the variables is more balanced, okay? So to summarize, uh, if your data or if your variables have largely different scales, then we want to go for standardization. So we, will, we first want to standardize the data set and then do the principal component analysis. And it turns out that doing um, this or the standardization is basically you instead of the covariance matrix of the data, you just look at the correlation matrix and do the same thing, okay? Uh, it's important to know that standardization changes our results. So it's important whether you choose or not to standardize because in each case, you will get a different uh, solution. So here's a question. So in, this, in the example that I presented, I had standardized the data set. So I had centered and divided by the standard deviation. What, hap what would happen if we only center the data, right? So I am not uh, dividing by the standard deviation. I'm only subtracting the mean. So what would the uh, PCA uh, of the or the centered data look like? Uh, so that's some food for thought. There will be a question related to this in the problem uh, in the problem set. Okay, so this is a very important aspect of PCA, that's dimension reduction. Uh, if you Google PCA, uh, one of the popular things that will pop up that it is a dimension reduction technique. And so far, if we had P original variables, we had P principal components as well, right? So we looked at P linear combinations. So where is the dimension reduction? So we haven't been doing it so far, but now we are ready to do so. So what we're going to do is instead of retaining all of the principal components, right? So we are not going to keep the P principal components. We are only going to select a certain subset of these principal components. And I'm going to, or typically, uh, people select principal components that explain between 80 to 85% of variance. So remember, uh, we were we calculated the total or the proportion of uh, variance explained by the first PC, proportion of variance explained by the second PC, and so on, right? So we will only pick uh, variables or the number of principal components that explain some a large amount of variance, and this large amount of variance is taken to be typically between 80 and 95 percent. There is nothing stopping you from picking the number of components that explain 99 uh, uh, percent of variation as well. This is a pretty subjective pick. Uh, another way to do this might be using a scree diagram. Okay, so a scree diagram is basically a graph where on the x-axis we have the number of principal components and y-axis is their proportion of variance. So let me show you. So on the y-axis, I have, so the first point is the first principal component. So y-axis is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 up to P, 
and the y-axis for the first point is the proportion of variable uh, proportion of variance explained by the first variable. The second is going to be proportion of variance explained by the first two variables. So we are going to sum the uh, variances or the proportion of variances for the first and the second one. So this is going to be an increasing graph. Okay. Um, to say it, uh, the point is somewhere here. And then I continue. And for the fourth principal component, uh, say this is the uh, proportion of variance explained by the first four. So at each point, I'm adding all of the previous proportions. So it's an increasing graph. And a lot of times you'll see that it will increase. And after some point, it will plateau. Okay. And uh, so in, for example, in this graph, this graph plateaus at point four or after point four. So I'm going to pick the first four components. So the logic is there I get a lot of value by adding the second component, right? So my proportion of variance, there's a significant increase. Up to four, there is a significant increase in the proportion of variance explained by the first uh, uh, by the first four uh, components. However, adding the fifth component, I get a very little increase in the proportion, right? So it's not worth it to add more variables. So you can think about it this way. The lesser the variables we have, the better it is. However, we don't want to lose out too much information. So this creep plot allows you to strike that balance between the number of variables and the amount of information. Okay, so you're typically looking for this plateau and the point at which you that plateau occurs is the number of principal components that you will pick. Uh, so there are other ways to pick number of components. Okay, so this is just one of the uh, several components. Uh, so anyway, I will not go into further details of, uh, of that, but you now have an idea of why this is a dimension reduction uh, technique. So just to implement this, if you go back to our example, right? Uh, no, not here. So it turns out, so if this is the principal, uh, if this is the PCA that we do, then the first principal component explains 99.2% of the variance. So we'll just pick the first variance, a uh, first uh, component and drop the second one. In this case, uh, in the standardized version, the first principal component accounts for 70% of the variation, right? So now it's not so clear, right? If you think 70% is enough, you'll just keep the first one. If not, you will, uh, you'll also include the second one. So this is a bit of a subjective uh, choice as well. So anyway, that's all for this video. Uh, in the next video, we shall talk about um, uh, doing principal component analysis when we have a sample. All right, see ya.